Now, when this phone came out back in 2012, this was the top tier phone at the time, I guess, from an Apple device. Apple only sold one iPhone every year at this point. You know, they may have came out with like an iPhone 5C and 5S eventually, but as of this point, Apple, you know, the iPhone 5 was the most expensive iPhone Apple made. And that was something that at that time was just, you know, expected, you know, iPhone 5 was a small iPhone, but all the other iPhones before that were small as well. And, you know, whenever you compare this thing to like a Galaxy Note 2 or like an S3 or whatever the other phones were at the time, the biggest selling point for the other phones was that it was bigger. But the one of the best selling points of the iPhone 5 was that it was smaller. Not everybody wants a bigger phone. And now we've kind of shifted to a more bigger size, but now we also have a smaller sized phone with the 12 mini. And I only bring that up because the iPhone 5's size was also small at that time. And to a lot of people that may have been a pro. Now, the, it still has that four inch panel on the front, which resolution wise is still actually pretty decent. And even in the later part of 2020, I'll be completely honest, the panel itself isn't that horrible. It still turns on, it still looks pretty decent. The colors are okay. I personally probably wouldn't be okay using a phone this small, but I just don't think the screen is that bad on it. I just think everything surrounding the screen is really where the problem lies. So that's probably one little aspect of it, and nothing like that has changed from the beginning on this year, but you still have a lot of bezel around the display, which like I said before, is perfectly fine, but it doesn't look bad. Like when you look at a phone like this, like I know I've seen a lot of bad phones in my lifetime. There's probably even phones, like honestly, I didn't even think the Razer phone, those ones, I didn't think those things looked that great. They look pretty outdated, but the iPhone 5 doesn't even look that outdated. It still looks pretty premium and it still feels extremely premium as well. And that's something that really shocks me, at, you know, without a doubt. And on the bottom, you have that lightning port. And this was the first iPhone to actually remove the 30 pin connector in addition to that lightning port. So that's something that was really cool for this phone. And that has held up extremely well. Had this thing had the same port as the iPhone 4S, then obviously things would have been a little different. But because this phone has that lightning pin connector or the lightning connector, that's something that really future proofed this phone because we're still using it. Eventually, I think with the iPhone 13, it's been rumored that we're going to remove it, but that's still something that's super impressive to me. And on the back, you have that glass back, you know, on the top and bottom, but that aluminum back pretty much for like an 85% of it. And without a doubt, this phone still feels extremely premium. And I've never said anything other than that. It still feels and looks like a very premium device. But on top of that back, you have that single camera setup. Now, mm -hmm.